Hello everyone, welcome. This is a new lecture in your course Linux for Absolute Beginners by Arionics. My name is Ahmed and in this section of the course we are going to make a small lab in which we are going to see the different ways with which you can install Ubuntu as an example Linux system on your machine. The first method that we're going to use is the most common one which is that you have a machine that is running another operating system and of course Windows is one of the most common operating systems around so I thought that the most common scenario in this case will be that you have a machine that is running Windows and you want to install Ubuntu side by side with Windows on the same machine so we are going to see in the first part of this section how to install Ubuntu with Windows on the same machine and in the second part of this section we are going to see how you can install Ubuntu as the only operating system on your machine now this is a virtual machine of course in order to show you in this presentation I have a virtual machine and inside it I have a version of Windows it is the latest version currently version 10 Windows 10 Enterprise and then you will have to do the following first thing you will have to go to computer management here if you are running an older version of Windows it's gonna be the same sort of thing the procedure that I'm gonna discuss here works with Windows 10 8 and 7 so it's basically the same thing all what you have to do first is that you go to disk management and here you're gonna see different disks you have if you have more than one disk you will gonna see them there or if you have more than one partition on your system you are you're gonna see them here what we are interested in is the primary partition the partition that is holding your C drive this is the one that we are gonna select this is the one that we are gonna work with and that is because we need the partition on which Ubuntu or your Linux system to be installed it has to be the primary partition of the computer for best results in order not to get things messed up it is highly recommended that you install the secondary operating system on the same primary partition but since windows has taken already all the disk space in this partition we are going to have to shrink the volume in order to get some space for ubuntu to be installed so here i have the amount of space i want to reserve for Ubuntu I'm gonna keep it at 10 gigabytes okay the whole drive is 40 gigabytes I'm gonna keep 10 only for Ubuntu and the rest is gonna be for Windows now I have 10 gigabytes of unallocated space on the primary partition C now let's close this and now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to insert the Ubuntu CD inside my drive here of course pretending that this is your drive because I'm Again, I'm using here a virtual machine or to show you and I'm going to select Ubuntu 16.04 desktop. This is the latest version of Ubuntu at the time of this recording. I'm going to press OK. And the moment I do that, I'm going to see that I have a CD drive that has been inserted. That's perfectly OK. Now I'm going to reboot the system. Now, the moment you reboot your system, you will have to press the key that is designated by your machine to enter the setup, the BIOS setup. Some machines have this key as F2, some other machines have this key as F8, some other types of machines have it F12. Whatever that key was, you have to press the key that makes you interrupt the boot sequence in order to select your boot device, either from the BIOS setup or from a screen like this one. In VirtualBox, and because this is a virtual machine, this key is F12. It is just getting me into the boot order. And I have to select that my boot device is going to be the CD-ROM and not the primary master or the IDE control. As you can see here, this is the first option and this is the default option that is gonna boot to the hard drive but since the hard drive has no Ubuntu installed yet it has the Windows as the primary operating system I'll have to choose the CD I'll press C in order to start the Ubuntu Live CD and as you can see here it is starting this is the screen of Ubuntu and Ubuntu has that advantage of that it is both a live CD and an installation CD a live CD if you haven't heard this term before is an operating system a full operating system that has been installed on a DVD that means that you can run an entire operating system as we are gonna see now you can run an entire operating system from the CD so as you can see here the screen the SD system has entered and now I have two options either to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu let's see what try Ubuntu gives us 
and let's appreciate the idea of live cities it becomes very very valuable if you have a system that is failing for example or that it need it cannot boot to the default operating system you can use this live cd in order to fix the problem for example have gain access to the disks of the computer as you can see here if i go to the file manager you're gonna see here that i can access windows 10 here it is mounted as a drive i can access all my files in the windows as you can see here this is my default user downloads and everything so this is one of the excellent ways that you can rescue a failing system imagine that you have a failing operating system whether it was linux or windows and you can no longer boot into your default system using a live cd like this one using a live cd like ubuntu you can gain access to your files perhaps back them up or restore or move them to another media if you are sure that this system will have to be reinstalled again or if you want this drive formatted so this is an excellent way to rescue the files that you don't that you don't want to get wiped out in the reinstallation or the format process additionally you can even access the internet from this live cd now you can have a computer that is that has a hard drive that is just bare metal and without installing any operating system you can just put in the live cd and have access to Oh, almost all the programs that Ubuntu has. This is the internet browser, Firefox, and this is LibreOffice Writer, Calc, and Impress, the ones that we have talked about in the previous section, which comes bundled with Ubuntu, and we're going to talk about them more deeply in future sections. So that's it. This is the live CD, and this is how you can access your system. And one of the most important things that you can do with the live CD, of course, is the disk utility in which you can really really appreciate the amount of live cd here because you can fix hard drive problems let's say for example you have a failing disk that needs to be fixed for example or repartitioned or any hard disk related task done to it you can enter this disk utility and do pretty much anything you want with the drive you can reformat it you can repartition it and so on now enough of talking about live cd let's get to install ubuntu as my secondary operating system on this machine I'm going to double click on install Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, which stands for long time support, and let the installer launch. Here you're going to choose your language, and Ubuntu is known or is very well known by the fact that it supports pretty much all the known languages to humankind. As you can see here, these are a lot and a lot of languages that you can have your installation and your operating system working in. We're going to choose English. Press continue. And here you have the option to download updates while installing Ubuntu. And this may become handy because instead of installing Ubuntu and then you will have to go in and update the repositories and, up and upgrade all the packages that you have installed, you have here the option to automatically download and install the updates while you are installing Ubuntu. The second option, which reads install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, Flash, MP3 and other media, this is exactly what we have talked about in the previous section. If you have a look here at this text in small font, the software is subject to license terms included with its documents. Some is proprietary. And that is what we said, is that Linux is not only a kernel, it is a kernel and a bunch of programs that get bundled with it. Not all those programs get shipped under the GPL license or the BSD or any of the open source licenses. Some of those are proprietary, as you can see here. And this does not mean that they cannot be shipped with an open source operating system or that they are not free. Okay, for example, here you have the MPEG layer 3 audio decoding technology, which is the, the, the decoder or the, the codec that is responsible for playing and encoding MP3 files. And this is not an open source license. This is a proprietary license, yet it gets shipped with Ubuntu, but it is optional because some people do not like to install proprietary licenses with the systems that they intend to, for example, modify. Sometimes you want to modify the software that you have since it's an open source one and then redistribute it under a different name. So if you have other proprietary software installed in this on, in the system that you intend to modify, then you cannot redistribute it because of course of the license that prevents you from doing this. I will uncheck both of those options. We want it, we just want to install Ubuntu in its simplest form. And here it's asking you to unmount slash dev slash SDA. 
And this is the way Ubuntu and Linux in general refers to disk partitions. In Windows, partitions are referred to as CD, E, F, G, and so on. But in Ubuntu and in Linux, it is being referred to as slash dev, and slash dev is the directory that contains the devices. We're going we're gonna to have a look at this directory in a later section in this course. And then SDA stands for SCSI disk. Okay, so this is SCSI disk. And then A, B, C, D, and E, and so on, it refers to the partition number or the partition location. So this is referring to the first partition or the first disk on the system. And if I have a number of partitions in this disk, they are going to be referred to as 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So it's going to be slash dev slash sda1 for the first partition on the first disk, sda2 for the second partition on the first disk, and so on. So since we have mounted this disk in order to show you that you can see the Windows files or the disk files when you open a live CD, and since Ubuntu needs to create partitions on this disk, it is asking you that it has to unmount this partition before continuing. Unmounting and unmounting are just, consider them for now as just when you plug in or plug out your USB flash disk into your system. This is, this is exactly the same concept of mounting and unmounting drives in Linux. When you mount a drive, you have exclusive access to this device or this drive, and you want to make and you, when you want to make any changes to it, you will have to unmount it first. So I'll press yes, please unmount it for me, and have a look here. It has already detected that you have Windows installed, you have Windows 10 installed, and it is giving you the default option of installing Ubuntu alongside Windows 10. The other options is that you can erase the whole disk and install Ubuntu. And of course, you can do something else. You can create and resize partitions yourself. And this is not recommended. I personally don't recommend this option. It, the recommended one is that you reduce the size of the Windows partition, just as we just did in Windows. We shrink the C partition, giving Ubuntu 10 gigabytes to be installed in them. And as soon as we start Ubuntu, it's going to detect automatically that it will be installed alongside another operating system. And it even detected the type of this OS, which is Windows 10. If you chose something else, it will give you the opportunity to do the resize from inside Ubuntu, and this is not a recommended practice, and it may give you an expected results. So we're going to go with the recommended and the selected option. Yes, please install Ubuntu alongside with Windows 10. Now here it's giving me the notice of the changes that is going to be written to disks. It is going to create a partition for the system. And the type of the partition or the format of the partition is of type ext4. And ext4 is one of the disk formats used by Linux. It's just the same as when Windows used the NTFS or the FAT32 formats to format the disk the, the, to format the disks that it works with. In Linux, it uses something called ext4. And there are also ext3 and ext2, but this is the most recent and most modern file system. It's, it's ext4. And it's telling you that it's also going to create another swap partition. And swap in Linux is the same as the, paging, as the paging space in Windows. It is the space taken from the disk in order to assist the RAM when it runs out of space. And at the same time, it holds the processes that are not frequently used in order just to give you the impression that you have more memory. And of course, that will boost the performance. Anyway, it's going to create two partitions, ext4 for the as the partition for Ubuntu and another one for Swap. Okay, I am fine with that. Here we're gonna select our location. It has automatically selected Cairo, Egypt as my location, but of course I can select any other location on the map if I want to. This is just for my time zone. Let's continue. And here you have the option to select your keyboard. We are gonna leave it at English and English US as the default keyboard. Now, here you will have to enter your name and this is very important because Ubuntu is one of the systems that takes user protection seriously. You are not allowed to log in with root, and root is like the administrator. Root, root is the most powerful user on the system. It's like the Windows administrator. It is the user who has all control on each and everything in Linux. So because of its importance and because of its sensitivity, Ubuntu does not allow you to log in as root. You'll have to log in with a normal user. Then from inside, you can execute the commands or the or the programs that needs root permission by using a program called sudo as we are going to see later in this section and later in future sections in this course so this is the 
primary user that is going to be used for logging into the system. This is your username. I'm going to choose a password for this user and then I'm going to continue. Now, these are all the information that I want to need from you in order to start in installation. It is going to install the system and if we have instructed it to download and install the updates, it will connect to the internet and download the updates while it is installing. Okay, so now the installation has finished. And it is giving you the option either to continue using the live CD of Ubuntu or to restart and use the fully installed version. We're going to select restart. And as soon as the system restarts, you're going to see a screen like this. You have the first option as Ubuntu. This is the, the system that we have just installed. You have some other options, advanced options. We're not going to consider those now. Memory test. Okay, then Windows 10 loader. Now you have two systems installed beside each other, and both of them are functioning properly. You can select Ubuntu, and if you leave this screen without any selections for a few seconds, the default operating system will get started, which is Ubuntu. So it's you can either press enter, or you leave the system to boot automatically, or you can choose Windows if you Windows if you want to. Now let's log on to our system. As you can see here, Ubuntu have been successfully installed. Okay, so let's now try to have a look at the other operating system to see whether or not it's gonna work. Now let's restart the system. And the moment you see this screen, if you want to select another operating system, you will have to quickly move the arrow because it's gonna wait a few seconds before selecting the default operating system, which is Ubuntu. Now we're gonna select Windows. And as you can see here, Windows is loading fine, as if it was the primary and only operating system on your machine. Now, in the next lecture, we are going to see how we can install Ubuntu as a standalone operating system without any other operating systems on the machine, which of course is a much simpler practice than this one. So, see you next. Thank you.